It's an honor and a privilege to stand up here and give you an insight of my little journey from a period of time up until now, which I think is important for everybody to understand and to see where we've gone and where we've come from and where we, where we went, came from and where we're going to go to. It's important, I think, because a lot of people don't understand our troubles and hardships that we went through, and yet we came so close to making it to two World Cups. It all started in 2007 when um, the rugby was in a hell of a state. We were 59th in the world, and I got a phone call from a phenomenal president, a guy by the name of Temba Sabanda, and said to me, Hey, boss, we need you to come in and help us. In 2007, 2012, we, um, we won the Africa Cup of Nations, which led us to go to, um, to Dubai and competed in a, in, a, in a series in Dubai and we came second in that. The most important thing was, was the support that I had from my friends in Arari and the friends in Baroya. Because what used to happen is that we would come up to a, a test match and go around to Madagascar and uh, myself and Rossi would look at it and I'd have gone to Archer Clothing and got some khaki pants, shirts, and we'd gone to Departure and got some shoes from Ed Duffy, Dave Lasker from Archer Clothing, and Lawson would say, but boss, we still need $17,000 before we get on the plane. What are we going to do? So Dorsey jumps in his car, McMillan, this one, that one, this one, that one, Lawson, there's the 17 k let's go. And that's how we operated up until 2014. That is how we worked, myself and Lawson. Because there was no money, but I had the following and the backing of people all around the country, which was phenomenal. But we were so successful, and that was what was amazing. We missed out in 2011, and um, by losing to Namibia by four points. Namibia had been playing in the Curry Cup. They had had a phenomenal World Cup to that World Cup qualifier, but yet we lost to them by four points. We then came to 2014, where it was our full World Cup qualifiers, and um, we had hardly anything. And money-wise was tough again. Things were hard for us. The country was struggling. We knew that money was a problem. But yet the union came to me and said, "Look, Morsi, there's no chance that you can have any warm-up games. You can't do X, Y, and Z. Let's just go." Kenya had been playing in the Curry Cup. Namibia had been playing in the Curry Cup. We thrashed in Madagascar by 50 points. We beat Kenya by 30 points. And we lost to Namibia by 3 points. We were then ranked from 59th to 24th. We got into the 20s. And that was what my target was for that year. I got the lifeline by Aaron and Lawson. And they said, look, Lawson, if you want to, we had an under 23 setup. And there is a possibility of us going into a super sport challenge, but we'll only know that very later in time. And uh, we uh, I got the phone call. Doors, how quickly did we put a team together? Well, how long do I have? We got two weeks. Came to our first game. We, we lost by three points, I think, our very, very first game, or 12, four points our very first game. We ended up drawing. Losing to Natal by 12 points, province by 16 points. We were on the up. Yes, we weren't winning any games, but we were just getting better every single time we played as a side. So, what was the common, the common goal and the common, sorry, the common denominator in it? It was time together as a team, which was, was, was given to us by money because we were able to do it. And we got successful. We had players that guys that had never been involved in something like that in their lives. We went on to do that. Then we went on to play in the Africa Cup that, 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 the, the rest of the year, later on that year. From what we've done, I guarantee you we'll bring back the Victoria Cup. And people said to us, it won't happen. I said, I guarantee we'll win the Victoria Cup back. Six out of five, or five out of six. We won, the, we won the tournament on our fifth game. It was phenomenal for us. We had brought back, we brought back to 32 in the world, from 48th back to 32. 
we have brought pride back into our life. So I was very adamant, and I said to the guys, we need to go back to our roots and understand why we play this game. What does it make us? What do we get out of it? And you know, I, I look at four factors of the way I coach and the way I look at things. And I'm not going to get deep into it because we don't need to do it, but it's, a, it's, a, it's what needs to be known of how we go forward from here. And it's integrity, honesty, discipline. And without those top three, you don't have a team. You don't have teamwork. You can't have it. Integrity, you've got to have integrity for your teammate. And the rest of what else you do. You've got honesty with your teammates. And you've got discipline to make sure all of that happens, which creates a team. So we instill in this into our team, and this is what we what we base our team on. I asked Danny Hondo, I said, Dan, you should have an open side flank. He said to me, Dawes, I've got one at the sports club. So I said, let's send him up. We flew him into Cape Town. It's like he walked in. And it was 83 kgs. I found up there and I said, Danny, what's the story of it? What have you done to me? 20 bankers rock spiders here. Yeah, they were huge. And he sent me an 83 year old, an 83 kg man. So he said to me, Dawes, trust me when I'm telling you. This oak is unbelievable. Anyway, cut a long story short. End of our campaign. That young man weighed 97 kgs. He was the most prime physique. We think Topaz is looking good. And Tony's is looking good. But this oak, trust me, he was in prime physique. Him and my blindside flanker then got a contract at UWC from that. They now play full contracted pay, everything paid, university paid, everything in Cape Town. From a young man, and I want to tell you the story, from a young man that walks to his home from a Rory Sports Club and then catches ball, then catches two ETs and walks home every single day to come and play rugby for us. What you people don't understand in life, in the coaching world, is I promise you every coach talks the same language in a changing room and in a team talk. We ask our players every single day that they wear the jersey of their country to lay their body on the line. Give everything you've got to pay for your country. There's nothing greater than to wear your national jersey. When those people are running on the field, they cry. When they see the national anthem, they cry even more. But the most amazing thing was what? Is those youngsters in the Western came in, in those Springboks and all over the world, they come home with very nice band panels after their game. Our guys come back with 50 US dollars and is expected to pay their family for a month. That's the very big difference. And that's where I look at this and I say, my God guys, we've got a tenfold bigger journey, a bigger story to tell in our own country. A lot of, some of you don't know who I am and what, what my... <sighs> rugby in my life, in my head, is, is anything. Besides my wife and my two kids. Rugby is anything to me. And when I see people like that, giving every single thing, every single day, and every single time we ask them to do something, and they still come back with the $50 that they've spent on their family, they come back and they do the same again for Zimbabwe. And they do it again for Zimbabwe. And yet we've, we've come this close twice to qualifying for a World Cup. But I ask the community and I ask the corporate world to understand that we've got a massive journey. And I'd love you to be part of it. And I'd love you guys in this corporate world to be able to say, I've changed one life. We as the corporate world have changed people's lives. 
Because that's what you do. He changes people's lives. My greatest, one of my life, we changed his life. And him and, him and uh, Godfrey have gone to university fully paid. They never thought they would do that. And that's what I'm trying to say to everybody. We've got a massive, massive journey. And I promise you guys, I've got the best team that I can have to take us to that qualifier in July 2022. We've got an 18-month window of us preparing. I want to make sure that out of that period of time, we can professionalize our players. We have got the most immense amount of talent in our country and outside our country that is dying to wear that green or white jersey. And all I ask is for us to go away today and think about it in the corporate world of how we can help. From giving donating caps to giving a million US dollars is something. The smallest thing can go a long, long way in sponsorship. One thing that's happened to us Zimbabweans is that we've lost the confidence, we've lost the most important thing in our lives, and that is belief in ourselves. It's massive, guys. Belief. When you stand against your man next to you, and you look at this man as a bad mountain next to you, You've got to believe that you can outplay him. You've got to believe when he's scrumming against you, you can outscrum him. I'm asking for commitment, desire, the one to help, and the one that can drive us to go forward.